يكملوا لعدة ولتكبه الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكون. We give thanks to for enabling us to observe this year's Ramadan. And as can be heard from the just recited verse of the Quran, Quran chapter 2, verse 185, the significance of Ramadan as the one in which the Holy Quran was revealed, as the one in which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu also had the Laylatul Qadri, which is said to be more important and valuable than 1,000 months. And that is why we thank Allah that today, Saturday, the 16th of May, 2020, is the 23rd day of Ramadan for the year 1441. We give thanks to Allah for keeping us safe and sound this far. And may He accept uh, our act of devotion, all our supplications, and all our prayers in this, during this period. Uh, this special program uh, reaching you from Fountain University, Oshogo. Fountain University, as you will know, is the baby, or it was established by the National Life Fat Society, the fastest growing Islamic organization in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, but across the world today. And today we are going to talk about the, uh, the, the topic of our discussion is uh, beyond COVID-19, and the challenges facing the Muslim Ummah, particularly in regard to why are we here on this planet Earth, what are we doing at the moment, and where are we supposed to be, and what platforms or what channels or media will take us to this. If you go to Quran, Surah uh, Dhariyat, we will read there in Quran, chapter 51 verse uh, 56 verse 56 Clearly indicate why we are here on this planet Earth. This passage says that Allah is saying that He has not created man and jinn, but for them to worship Him, Ibadah. It goes on. I do not want any sustenance from them. I do not want them to feed me. Certainly, Allah is the all-sustaining, all-powerful. So simply put, this shows that the purpose of man's existence on earth is simply to worship God. But now let us look at it to know that our act of worshiping God does not in any way contribute to Allah's control and maintenance of the earth. And I will give you a simple illustration. Now, for almost two months now thereabout, We've been going through this pandemic, uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. There had been lockdowns, there had been shutdowns, there had been restrictions, all this. Again, if there had been a total failure of humanity from A to Z, from fasting or from praying or from doing, or even going to Hajj, we, will, we don't even know whether Hajj or Umrah will be possible this year. Our failure to perform any of these acts will not in any way affect the rise of the sun, the rising of the sun, the setting of the sun, the rising of the moon, and the walking of the planet in any way. So the sun will continue to rise in the morning, set in the afternoon. The moon will continue to show in the, at night. Rains will continue. So just to tell us that our acts of worship, all acts of worship do not in any way contribute to Allah's overriding power and his ability to control the affairs of the earth. 
but it's only to, for us to show our gratitude to him. And that is where we need to worship him as a show of appreciation. Because he doesn't require, he doesn't deserve, or he doesn't require any form of uh, sustenance from us, any feeding, any form of uh, anything at all. And we do this. So just to tell us that we are supposed to maintain our uh, obedience to him and try to perform all acts of worship as must be required. Then let us know this simple illustration now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all living things and all things that we may not identify. And if you go to Quran, yeah, it's telling us that, look, everything that has been created, they glorify him. Although we may not understand what the way they do, human beings, animals, lower animals, the terrestrial world, the celestial world, those under the water and whatever. And it tells us this clearly. Yeah. This for that everything in on earth and in heavens and between the both both planets they glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything. But the simple fact is that you cannot understand the way they glorify Almighty Allah. But He, Allah, who created them, understand what they do. Stones, plants, and everything. But we human beings, we cannot understand the way they do. So just to tell us that every living creature engages in Allah's the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what makes human position a bit higher is that man has been given the intellect and also the passion. So he has a choice of either obeying God or disobeying him. The angels have been given only the intellect but without the passion. So they, are not, they cannot disobey Allah. Like I've seen Allah, they do not, they cannot disobey Allah. The lower animals, have no intellect, but they are given passion. So that is why you can see lower animals, gold, sheep, do whatever they like. You send away, go from a particular spot, it's good to come back there. So human beings have been given the choice and the passion. And that is what makes we human beings to be superior to all other creatures. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regards human beings as the highest form of creature that he has said uh, he has on earth. Now, for the past two months or there about now, even as we are now in Ramadan, this question, the pandemic of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has ravaged the entire world from east to west, from north to south, people have wondered where this should be. Of course, we know we have many of us who, in this Ramadan, there are other, all over the whole world, we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping the Ramadan. And the question may now be that, where should this kind of thing happen now? And Quran has provided an answer to this, that man should not think that because you worship him, uh, nothing bad will afflict us. And that is contained in Quran, which says, that is Quran chapter 2 to 3. Quran chapter 29, that is Al Ankabut, verses 2 to 3. Saying, Do people think that they will not be tried? that they will not suffer any affliction because they claim that they believe in Allah? Do you think so? Certainly not. 
the fact that you claim to worship Allah, the fact that you are committed to Allah, does not mean that you will not suffer any form of tribulation or affliction. For the simple reason that Allah said, those who were before us, Allah had tried them. Those who are going to come after us, Allah will also try them. And he's doing this to know who are genuinely committed to him in worship, and to know those who are only superficially committed to him. So when afflictions like this COVID or any other form of tribulation happens, it is a way for Allah to test our belief, to test our commitment to, 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 to him, and to actually gauge our level of uh, iman or belief in his authority. And Allah says that when things like this occur, those who suffer evil, who, who are vicious by, by nature, it's going to be a form of punishment for them. But those who are actually virtuous, those who are righteous, those who do good, afflictions like these are actually meant to cleanse them, to purify them, and to serve as a form of reward for them uh, here and in the hereafter. So, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that we human beings should consider any act that uh, befalls or any unpleasant condition that befalls us as a form of belief trial. Also, as Salama said that a true believer, anything that happens to a true believer is good. If what Allah brings to him is pleasant, he's going to thank Allah and for said, and this is better for him. If anything unpleasant happens to God, to him again, is going to seek forgiveness from Allah, and that is better for him. So either way, both good and bad are meant to be one of Luhum Bil Shari Wal Khair Fitnah, that we try you with the bad and the good as a form of tribulation. So if Allah endows you with money, with wealth, with health, is to show what we will do with this endowment. Will you be grateful? Will you uh, spend these things in, in, in a good way? If he afflicts with something bad, it also shows, it's also trying to know whether you will respond in, uh, to him in a very pleasant way and seek his forgiveness. And that is uh, the, the essence. And Rasulullah has said, once came in the night, and uh, he, when one, one of his wives, uh, Zainab, went to Jash, and Rasulullah was terrified, I said, oh, Zainab, uh, something happened today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the, the, the gate, the fortress of Gog and Magog. That is, they are going to affect the whole world. And Zainab said, oh, Prophet Allah, will any evil afflict us, will he affect us while we do good, while we do God, do good? That is, is the wife of prayer was asking, where should evil befall the Ummah when there are uh, very virtuous and good people among the, them? And one said, yes, this is going to be the case when the few that perform evil in the society are not corrected. When we tolerate evil being committed by very few, of course, Allah's punishment is going to visit the culprits and the innocent. And that is why what we are expressing today, if you go through history, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran uh, chapter 9 verse 126, say, Allah is telling us that they are trying. Now, if you go through history, there was a, what we call the Marseille plan. In 1820, there was what you call the, uh, the, the cholera. In 1920, there was the Spanish flu. Now we are in the year 2020. So Quran is saying that, don't you see that every year, but you know Allah's recording of year, I said somewhere, that a day by Allah's recording is like 1,000 years. So if we, for the past 400 years, if you have been, the world has, has been experiencing calamities at the, a gap of 100 years, that shows that Allah's 
uh, reminder to us that don't you see that you are tried once or twice from time to time? And then the, 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 that verse concludes the saying, Thuma hum laya to good. But again, what brought this affliction to you in the first instance was the enormity of your sins. These days we have series of things, kidnapping, sex trafficking, human trafficking, kid, a series of things, kid, ritual killing and all whatnot. So people, all, when all these things happen, in the West today, you know this question of homosexualism, lesbianism, transsexualism, and all these things happen in these places, committed by just a, a minority, and the majority are not condemning it, and that is why Allah like said that once you people refuse, once people who are committing evil amongst you are very few, and those who are in the majority refuse to stop them or discourage them or even keep quiet, then Allah Swana what Allah will make his punishment to be overwhelming, will allow it to go around everybody. Then he will make those who, the, the, the bad, the worst amongst you will be your rulers. And the best amongst you will now pray, and the prayers will not be answered. So that is what the world is going through now. What type of fitnatan last word? Khasa. So that verse is from Quran, Surah Al Anfal, verse 25. Verse 25. That beware, be conscious, be cautious of a fitna, of a tribulation, of a trial, that when it occurs would not happen only to those who are not pious, those who are bad, that when Allah's punishment comes, it's going to overwhelm the bad, the good, and the ugly. And that is his pattern. And, so, and that is why it's encouraging us that Allah's uh, tradition from past, that Allah had in the past destroyed certain communities. And he has given a reason for that. And what they did, if you go to Quran, uh, Surah to Yunus, chapter 10, that's verse 13. وَلَقَدْ أَهْلَ الْقُرُونَ الْأُولَى وَلَقَدْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَلَقَدْ أَهْلَكْنَ الْقُرُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا وَجَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَمَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْقَوْمَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْقَوْمَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Follow to that have in Quran chapter 29, start to uncaput, uh, verse 41, which says, Bismillah ar-Rahman That was the sole reason why he did. And their messengers came to them, with proofs, but they refuse to believe. And Allah is saying that Allah will never act unjustly to any community. That is to say that all those who had suffered some destruction in the past, and that is what is continued in the second passage, in Quran chapter 29, verse 40, that among those Allah that Allah had destroyed in the past, some were made to uh, to be buried alive. Some were made to sink in the sea. Some were made to turn to dogs, to monkeys, to pigs and whatever. And Allah enumerates the various forms of punishment he had meted out to all those who had gone in the past because of their unjust way of acting. And, and he said that he had repeated these things all over. But again, Rasulullah said that he prayed, he requested for three things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah granted him two out of three things. And I used to tell you that we human beings, it's not every request that you make 
to Allah that is going to grant. Rasulullah said he made three requests and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only granted two. The first one was that he asked Allah that he should not destroy his own communities, his own community, his ummah, as he used to do with those before him. And Allah granted that, okay. But those in the past, people of Lord, people of Who, people of No, except those who believe all others were destroyed. So Allah granted him that, okay, for your own community, for your own ummah, I'm not going to destroy you completely as I used to do in the past. The second one is that, okay, do not visit my community with drought and famine as you used to do in the past, such that all those communities will be also wiped out. I said Allah granted that. Then the third one, he requested that, okay, please allow my ummah to be united and free them from a uh, destructive calamity. I said, Allah said, no, I'm not going to grant you that. So that means division, disunity, will continue to be among the whole world of the Muslim Ummah. Again, visitation by calamities and misfortunes will also continue. And the only way that this will be alleviated or removed is not through any other thing, but by returning to God through Tawbah. That if you have, if you return from your evil ways, if you engage in a lot of vicarious remembrance of Allah, Allah will then now come back and uh, visit you with His mercies after He might have visited you with His punishment. And that is the only remedy. Now, we have been going through this pandemic now for quite a while now. And we have seen what we have suffered all through it. Of course, we know that it is an unpleasant thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, ma yaf Allah bi azabikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that what will be Allah's gain, what will Allah derive, what pleasure will Allah derive by subjecting you to punishment, by chastising you, by making you uncomfortable. What will Allah derive from that? He doesn't Add to his authority, it doesn't add to his grandeur. Quran right, chapter 4, verse 147. Quran right, chapter 4, verse 147. See those two conditions Allah has put there. In shakartun, if you give thanks to him, if you show gratitude to him, he has given you health, he has given you wealth, he has allowed you to perform all his acts, giving you more than you need, yet you do not show gratitude by expending those resources in his approved ways. If you also show sincere belief in him, if you do not associate anything with him in worship, Allah will have nothing to do by punishing you. No, not at all. Because Allah himself is a shakiran alim. Allah himself shows gratitude. See Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, by my paradise with my money. He asks you to pray, to fast, to give zakat, to go to hajj if you can. And he's going to reward all this hell with eternal abode in paradise. <coughs> Excuse me. So the wealth belongs to him. He still wants us to spend there from to be able to have the Suppose he says, okay, do all this, and I have nothing to, to give in return. There's something we can do. But he said, I'm going to reward you for spending all those resources that I've endowed you with, with my favors and with eternal abode in paradise. So that's the same. He himself shows gratitude. That even if you intend to do something good, he's going to reward you for that good intention alone. If you now do it, that good thing, is the, uh, uh, one good deed, the minimum you're going to give is ten, tenfold reward. And that's why he said Ramadan. For anything, any act of worship, any act of good deed any man does, is going to have ten times the reward. Except for Ramadan. That he alone knows the quality and the quantity of reward he's going to give. It's not quantifiable. Just to show how 
Allah himself also shows gratitude to us for obeying his rules. If you intend an evil, I say if you intend an evil, Allah will not punish you for it. But if you do it, he's going to punish you only for that single act alone. But again, if you now return to him with tawbah, with repentance, sincere repentance, he's going to overlook that evil deed and also going to reward you for turning back to him because you know that he can punish you. But because you admit that he can punish you and that you now seek since you repent to him sincerely, you're going to overlook that thing and wipe it out from your book of records to show how Allah is gracious and merciful. Now, let us now proceed further to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as how we need to behave in this situation of pandemic. Uh, Rasulullah sallam says, sallam. if you hear of a smallpox or a calamity in a land, don't go into that land. If you are already in that land, do not leave it. So simple principle is this. Self-isolation, quarantine is a major uh, measure the, uh, just of recommended by Islam according to this particular hadith. And that goes to show that Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It says that to keep yourself away from a community where there is evil or there, there, there is a calamity, there is a pandemic, there is an outbreak of something. And he was, he was goes for that and by saying La tumaradu al-musih wa firru min al-ta'oon firar al-majzool wa firru min al-ta'oon firar al-asad. Do not, a, 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 an infected animal should not be allowed to intermingle with a healthy one. That is not only for human beings, that even animals Animals that are infected with any form of disease should not be kept with those that are healthy. So that shows that even why he, that shows that he, human beings who are the other creature, uh, creature are equally required to keep off completely from any area or any environment where there is any infection of whatever type. Don't throw yourself into uh, self-destruction one says that do not uh, sort of encourage do not entertain the belief that okay whatever Allah has decreed will happen to you no don't throw yourselves into things that could be into destruction don't invite self-destruction if you do you are going to be guilty of uh, self-murder and if you are guilty of self-murder of course, you know that it's a very serious punishment with Allah. That if you kill yourself, you claim your life deliberately, you are already sure of divine eternal punishment. So, all this restriction that the government uh, has tried to advise, to impose, we should understand that all derive from Quran, they all derive from Islam, and we should, as much as possible, keep to them and for our safety and for the safety of others. That is what we are supposed to do. And we should know that even the, uh, the sanitation, the hygiene, all of these that are being recommended are part and parcel of Islam. When you pray, for example, now you are supposed to wash your hand, wash your feet, wash your, and all this, most part of our body that are exposed. All the exposed part of our body are, are washed. And that is what Rasulullah Sallam said. Do you imagine that if a man has a stream running past his house, and the person is able to do watch this one five times a day. Do you think the person will be will, will, will be dirty? And they say no, he won't. I say that is the essence of ablution before prayer. They will do the cleaning process, the clean ritual we do before salat is a way of showing us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala enjoins us to purify ourselves, to be clean, to be uh, to, to, to maintain sanitation at all time, and that is to show the emphasis Islam has placed on this particular act. Now, as we now, we are now in the last 10 days of, uh, the 10 days of Ramadan, in which 
uh, Professor Salam recommends that we should look for Laylatul Qadri, or what you call the, 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 night, the night of majesty, uh, which to which a whole chapter, Quran, chapter 97, is dedicated to Laylatul Qadri. now, this whole chapter of Quran, Quran chapter 97, is dedicated to Laylatul Al Qadr, the, 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 the night of majesty. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has recommended that look for Taharraw Laylatul Al Qadr. Feel Ashril, feel with him in Ashril Awakim in Ramadan. Look for Laylatul Qadri in the last, in any of the ten odd nights towards the end of Ramadan. The 21st night, the 23rd night, the 25th night, the 27th night, and the 29th night. So, and the same principle is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, has not given, or of course, the Prophet said Allah made him to forget that specific night of Laylatul Qadri. And that was to give us the opportunity that, okay, if you now dedicate, if for the whole of Ramadan, 29 or 30 years of Ramadan, you've been able to do some acts of worship, then the last 10 days, then five out of that, those 10, require, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires us to give special attention to worship. And of course, it is also during this last 10 that we are supposed to do an itikaf. But of course, this year itikaf, we cannot satisfy the condition of itikaf in the mosque, in the public mosque, as usually prescribed. But you can do it within your own premises as much as you can. Of course, it's also about dedication. But the principle is this, that it allows you to give special attention to nothing else except dedication to Allah, except prayer, the session of the Quran, and of course, you know it's also preparatory to Sadaqat al Fitri or what we give us at the charity of Ramadan. You know, you're also required to give what we call Sadaqat al Fitri or the charity associated with Ramadan. Traditionally, it's supposed to be in form of food items, the, the common staple items. But again, the monetary equivalent for that can also be given because the, the idea is to ensure that those who will normally labor hard on the day of Eid for their food, they should also have something to eat. So Eid calf is very, very important during these last 10 days, which we cannot do in our various homes, if possible. Of course, no woman can do Eid calf without the approval of the husband. According to Aisha, none of the wives of the Prophet did Eid calf during the lifetime of the Prophet. So, but for our purpose, our women can do it, if so allowed by, 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 by the husband. Now, they also zakat. We also require to give zakat. Any zakat, any compulsory act of worship done during Ramadan, will have the value of it being done for at least minimum of seven times. That is, if you give zakat during Ramadan, you see, it is as if you have used zakat for consecutive seven years. Umrah also. The best form of charity you can give is the one you give in Ramadan. If you give sadaqah in Ramadan, it's as if you have given zakat. If you are given zakat for one year, it's as if you are given zakat for seven years or even more. So the minimum required for zakat of money for the staff of this year is about, about one million, one hundred thousand naira. Of course, you are going to pay for every one million you have over a year. The minimum you pay is about twenty-five thousand naira. That is two point five percent of your annual savings, minus your debt, minus your commitment. Is what you pay. So the simple calculation is that two point five percent of your savings 
or of your reserves or of your money, of your wealth, is what you give as a card. But again, there are other acts of worship that you are supposed to engage in outside the zakat or any other thing, apart from fasting. Uh, we've just said that Layla to the falls on this in, in this last five odd nights of uh, Ramadan, 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, and 29th. So, and Rasulullah has given us the prayer. Of course, there is a common one, and I'm going to recite to you the full prayer. Uh, of course, I'm going to tell you the meaning of the prayer. The simplest form of this prayer is Allahumma inna ka'afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. We are supposed to be repeating this as many times as possible. The simple way is, this, Oh Allah, you are the one who overlooks all mistakes. You overlook all mistakes, you overlook all misdeeds. You like forgiveness. You like uh, to overlook misdeeds. Please overlook my misdeeds. But I'm going to recite the full text of the prayer as given by the Prophet himself. And I'm going to give you the meaning. And it goes like this. Allahumma inni as'aluka rahmatan min indika tahdi biha qalbi wa tachmau biha amri wa tullimu biha sha'fi wa tusluh biha ghayati wa tarfau biha shahidi wa taruddu biha ulfati wa ta'asimuni biha min kulli su'in Allahumma inna ka'afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni so that is the simplest form of the prayer. But the full text of the prayer is what I've just said, and I'll give you the meaning. And it says, Oh Allah, I ask you with your mercy, such a mercy from you that you will guide my heart, all right? All that has been dispersed in my affairs, you bring them together. All that have been disrupted in my life, you manage and repair them. My goals and my objectives will make them to be thorough and to be nice and sincere. Then again, you will also try as much as possible to put aright the crooked part of my life and all that I require to make me uh, uh, be my companion in my loneliness with your mercies and with your graces and with your favor. And then you will protect me from all evils, from all afflictions. O oh Allah, inna ka'afun, you are the most forgiving, you are the most, uh, 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 the one that overlooks every mistake. You like that to be done. Please forgive me and overlook my mistakes and iniquities. So this, uh, this kind of prayer should be repeated as often as we can during this last few days of Ramadan, and we should continue with that until the evening of the last day of Ramadan. So, and this is very, very important. Now that we are still going through the phenomenon of COVID-19, of course, we should bear in mind that we should all act of division that we are supposed to do, we should continue to do them. Uh, Quran chapter 2, verse 177, gives us something you have to look at. That what we call righteousness is not only limited to praying. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Akbar. And to those who are qualified out, one of the best, if not the best today in Nigeria today is Nazars, the Nesfat Zakat and Sadaka Foundation. They engage in empowerment and for all the categories of those that are supposed to enjoy Zakat. Of course, there are other Islamic organizations as well, like the Zakat and Sadaka Foundation of Jais, there's also that of Ansaru. In fact, there are several Islamic organizations. So if you are not sure yet of where to uh, put your zakat or how to put your zakat, contact the, this, the Nasfat uh, organ, which is called Nazas, or any other organization that is close to you, they will assist you to follow Allah's instruction as to how it's supposed to be done. But I'm now coming back to what we need to do now, post-COVID, or even outside COVID. And the challenges, and that is the second part of this our talk, the challenges facing the Muslim Ummah. Uh, this is what is enumerated in Quran chapter 2, verse 177. 
ليس البر أن تولوا يا مكتوب المشرق والمغرب. It is not about righteousness that you face the east or west. That okay, it's only by prayer. Prayer alone, this the five daily prayer facing the east or west, it doesn't translate automatically into righteousness. But righteousness is what? Okay. Fine. It's telling us. About virtuous, virtue or virtuousness is one who believes in Allah. That's one. Two. And the last day, believe that whatever you do in this world, you are going to account for it in the hereafter. Three. And also believing in the angels. And also believing in the book of Allah. And the prophet. ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والمساكين وابن الصبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وقام الصلاة وعت الزكاة والموفون بأهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأساء والدواء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون صدق الله مولانا العظيم. This particular quotation from the Quran, chapter two, verse one seven seven, as I said earlier on, embraces all the contents of what an ideal Muslim should do. See, earlier on we were saying that those in the past, Allah used to destroy them when they refused to follow Allah's injunctions. Of course, we know that Islam came as the last message, uh, came to the Prophet Muhammad so, uh, as the last prophet, and we, the current Ummah, the current community, this Ummah, as the last Ummah. And so that's why Prophet Salam said that we are the last to come, but we are the first in the sense that in the sense that he being the leader of all the prophets that came, and also the one that is given the concession to intercede on the day of resurrection. And I will explain something to you. This particular verse that we are going to sort of explain fully now, gives a lot of responsibility to the learned class, to the ulama, to the learned people because they are the custodians of Allah's laws and regulations. It gives a high responsibility to the entire human race, in the sense that, as, as we said earlier on, that when those who were committing evil were very few, and those who are not doing the bad things are in the majority, but those who are in the majority, if they fail to stop those who are in the minority, Allah SWT will, will visit them with all with his ferocious punishment. And of course, there's evidence of this also in the Bible. If you go to uh, Proverbs, uh, if you go to Proverbs uh, uh, verses, uh, let's see, verses 24, 10 to 12, and Mark 10, 24 to 47, is there. Proverbs 24, verses 10 to 12, and Mark 10, 46 to 49. It's also there, just to show that the, the scripture, this verse shows that in, uh, the, the, the scripture of Allah, the message of Allah, as found in the Quran, as found in Torah, as found in Jail, they are all from God, except that human hands have played some part in some other. 
but just to show that we all must be involved in the act of cleansing the society. Now, and that is why this verse is saying that it is not only about righteousness that you face east or west in prayer or in supplication. But again, what we consider as righteousness, what a Muslim, what the Muslim woman should embrace, regardless of condition which they are, are this. Number one, to believe in God and the last day. If you are conscious of the last day, that you are going to give account of what you do here on earth, then you're very much sure that you do the, the right thing. And then you will not tra transgress or go against Allah's intuition. While Kitab, while Malaika, believe in angels, that the, you have angels protecting us, according our deeds. While Kitab and, and the scriptures, and also the, all the prophets, that is why Islam is very unique. Islam requires all its believers, all Muslims, to believe in all prophet from Adam to prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Without an exception. You say you believe in only Adam or Muhammad, you don't believe in Jesus or Moses, you are not a Muslim. You are required to believe in all of them without an exception. Again, So what qualifies you as a member of this great community? You give out of your resources, out of your wealth, that thing that you also like. You see, it's not that uh, some, some people want to give away clothes or uh, shoes that they cannot wear themselves. And unfortunately, for those, many people do that. If you have several clothes in your wardrobe, several shoes on your shoe racks, and you look at all these things for a year, there are some of them you have not worn at all. That means you do not need them. There are some who need them more than you do. So that's why the verse says, Wa talmala ala hubbihi. Those items of your wealth, of your product that you also like, try to give them out. That will kurba to your family members, to your blood, to your kith and kin. So say the Quran. Say you should start with home. These days, we hear some of our people, they will sponsor tens or fifties of to people to Mecca. Even those who they want to spend as uh, sponsor to Mecca are people who are even jobless. They have no business. They are not em so but you should start by empowering, being nice to your immediate family, your blood relations first. That's what Quran says. That will kurba. Any act of charity done to a family member, as so Salam said, is going to earn you double rewards. One is going to earn you reward for being charitable. Two is going to earn you reward for keeping the tie of blood, blood relationship. And Rasulullah so Sallallahu says that anyone who wants his life to be prolonged, who wants to have a good record with his Lord, follow Yasilla Rahima, let him make the tie of relationship, the bond of, the kinship of relationship, let him join together. Whoever tries to uh, keep broad relationship, Allah says, I'm going to join with such a person as well. Whoever tries to break, break prohibition, Allah says, well, I'm also going to break with such a person. So that's the Quran. Waliyatama. Yes. Those who have lost either or both parents, you should be nice to them. You well. should help them, assist them. Don't sit over their property. Be nice to them. Don't eat at all Quran. Anyone who, those who consume the property of the orphans. Al-Inawaya those who usurp or those who take over illegally the property of orphans or widows. Quran says they are eating hell, fire, into their, in their, in their stomach. And certainly they are going to enter hell fire in hereafter. So those people who now, I mean, see the Quran is telling you what you need to do to be a bona fide member of this ummah, of this community. You should be nice to the orphans, you should be nice to the widows. And Prophet said that, the Prophet had his two fingers together like this and said, I and someone who looks after orphans or widows shall be like this together in paradise. So just to show you the extent to which uh, Quran requires to be nice. Even from our own resources. 
Wal masakin. Then there are those who are very poor. You see, we have two categories of people. Some people are very poor, but they will, they will, be, they will feel so ashamed to ask. They will feel so defiant that they find it demeaning to beg. If you are able to identify those people, be nice to them. Not only in Ramadan, but outside Ramadan. So that is the message, what I would call the post-COVID message. Whether there is COVID or no COVID, whether there is calamity or not, you should try as much as possible. Those who are out of honor will not beg, and you know they are in need, be nice to them. Then those who will come to you, regardless of their status, whether they are Muslims or they are not Muslim, whatever they do, and they are in need, you are supposed to be nice to them. That is what this by saying. Give out to them in charity. Rasulullah gives us in the hadith that there was a particular person who gave water to a very thirsty dog. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Prophet, to the Prophet of Salaam, tell that man that he has become an inmate of paradise for giving water to that thirsty dog. And the companions were surprised. We be rewarded for giving succor to even an ordinary animal? And Rasulullah said, yes, for every living thing with a living heart, you'll be rewarded for being nice to them. So if Allah will admit somebody to paradise for being nice to a dog, talk less of somebody who's also nice to a fellow human being. How Allah will remove such a person. So that is what you need to do as a Muslim to every human being, every living human being. Which that will be. And again, there's also another part of the hadith that says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a woman was made to be an inmate of hellfire for being uh, unkind to her cat. The verse said, This woman was keeping a cat as a pet, but tied down the cat, did not allow the cat to go out to feed. And was not feeding the cat until the cat died of hunger. Um, simply for doing that, Allah made the woman to be an image of hellfire. So imagine how many people die today out of hunger, out of embezzlement of our money by politicians, by non politicians, by whatever. They are already reserving their places for them where they belong in the hereafter. Then this verse also goes further to tell us. What Somebody, what we call a, a wayfarer, somebody who becomes stranded in a, in, during a journey. Somebody was traveling, somebody who is traveling and his resources got exhausted or he ran out of resources of money, whatever, or accommodation. You must try to assist such a person, either by accommodating or providing him resources to go further, or even providing him with a safety until he gets to it. So, that is what you are supposed to do also. Next. Those who will come to you and need. So you are supposed to be nice to all these kind of people. See, see how the Quran is listening what you need to do as a Muslim to be a true member of this Ummah. It's not just really about uh, fasting, about prayer. Of course, these are established something. But there are things you need to do. Some people have had, some people say with pride, yes, this year I will have made the 38th Hajj I have performed. And I said, if going to Hajj several times is an act of uh, worship in Islam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi will have performed it more than once. The Prophet went to Hajj just once. He went to perform Umrah just once. Whom are you following by performing Umrah 30, 40 times? Whom are you imitating by performing Hajj 20, 25 times? The resources, the money you will have spent for those, what I will call, wasteful exercise could best be spent to educate orphans, offer scholarship to people, empower the, 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 the needy, establish people in business, spend, uh, assist the, the, the people in health needs, health, education, empowerment. These are the things that will earn you more rewards in Islam. And I'm going to end this something later on with a highlight of the people that will convince of what we are saying. These are the things that will earn you a reward or even rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are asking for it, help them. Those who cannot ask, assist them. Yes? Those who are in bondage. Now see, to let you know that all those things 
he has mentioned, in fact, will earn you more reward. Because, the, 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 uh, you see, in, in Islam, what we call sadaka or charity is not only about monetary value. Apart from zakah, which is a monetary value, you have other 17 acts of charity. That, for example, if somebody comes to you for advice, and you advise such a person correctly, you have earned reward for a sadaka. If you pray for somebody who is in need of your prayer, that's also an act of sadaka. Even meeting somebody, when cheerfully meeting somebody, you know, with your, uh, cheerfully, it's also a form of sadaka. If you also remove any harmful object from the road, broken bottles, thorns, so you have performed an act of sadaka. If you dig well or bore hole to assist your neighborhood or to your people, you've also performed an act of sadaka. So, as I said, there are 17 various items that are covered by charity in Islam that make you to be a member of the Muslim Ummah. Before Allah even mentioned anything about zakat, about prayer, or daily prayer, or even zakat, just to let you know that several acts are there that will earn you paradise apart from the five pillars of Islam. What a, 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 وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا أَهْدُوهُ It's quite, when they promise, mm. we've had several cases of people at occasions, you are doing the launching of a program, yes, I'm going to give this mosque, I'm going to give the society five million naira. That is where the thing will end. I'm going to give you the scholarship for the society, two million naira, and we will applaud. Yes, he said. And that is where the thing will end. They have been, and that is very common among many of us Muslims. They will make pledges to earn public applaud. Whereas if you do not fulfill, you do not redeem that pledge, Allah has already taken you out of the man, membership of this ummah. And that is why Rasulullah Islam said that Ayatul Munafiq Salaf, the best way to identify a hypocrite, a munafiq, and to be a munafik is most dangerous because in Islam, Quran, according to Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created man and jinns. Among the men, you have a believer, Muslim or Mumin, you have a kafir, and you have a munafik. And the munafik in al munafik in fi darkil asfal min al nar. Rasulullah, Quran even said that those who are hypocrites will be at the lowest dungeon of hellfire. And this, what is why say now? If somebody who makes a pledge or promise and fails to fulfill is a symbol of a hypocrite. With a when he speaks, he's going to tell lie. Somebody who lies. And there's no lie for fun. So all those who used to make a, a April Fool or something, that it's not a lot. Quran says that you cannot lie in earnest or in jest. Don't do it. It's, it's not allowed. Don't say, I, I, I'm just playing. No, it's not. Because anything you utter is already being recorded. Mm. It's, that's, it's like something. So you are not going to be a stand up jester. And you say, yeah, okay, because if you do that for a living, you are just wasting your time. It's not it's going to be a blessed kind of animal. If somebody confines, confides in him or keeps something in trust for such a person, he's going to betray that trust. So these three attributes are said to be the attributes of a hypocrite, a monarchist. And this is what this verse is saying that, is that those attributes should not be found in you to be a bona fide member of the Muslim ummah, of this Muslim community. Next one. وَالْمُوفُونَ بِأَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا أَهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالدَّغَاءِ وَإِنَ الْبَأْسِ Now, what are also required as a believer is that you have to exercise endurance, patience, perseverance. Rasulullah Sallam said that what is called a sabru is of three types. If you turn 
if you do what Allah has commanded you to do, like praying, like fasting, like whatever, the, any act of worship at all you do, the minimum uh, reward you have is going to be 10. Just, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbolism, just to show you that a single act of charity or good thing will add the minimum of 10. So for doing that, it's also, yeah, yeah, because to, uh, Quran says that to perform act of worship is very, very serious, it's very tedious. To wake up at night, to wake up in the morning for suhoor, that is it's going to add you 10. Then if you avoid what Allah says you should not do, don't drink alcohol, don't backbite, don't fornicate, don't puff. All those bad acts that Allah says you not do. If you refrain from all those things out of fear of Allah, you are going to have 20 rewards. The third one is that if Allah now visits you with something that is serious, that is an affliction, and that you now maintain uh, some sort of, you, you persevere, you endure it, Allah is going to give you 30 rewards. So a sabro, that is in Islam, in Quran, has been uh, sort of indicated by this verse, so three times, for doing good, for avoiding evil, and for exercising patience or, or perseverance on bad things. So all this, ulaika la sinna saddaqu, wa ulaika humul All these people who engage in all these things that we have listed above, are those who are exactly truthful. And you see, it takes us back to what we said at the beginning of, uh, of, of, of this lecture, that people should not think that they will not be tried for simply saying they believe. Allah says, go to try. Allah wants to know those who are actually truthful. So it's not just enough for you to say that I believe in God and perform that. No. If you do not perform all or most of these things that we've listed here, you are not a true Muslim. And the lessons of fasting, which is Ramadan, when Quran says in chapter 2, verse 1 is 3, Allah has asked you to perform Ramadan, to fast during Ramadan, to do itikaf, to give a sadaqah to, uh, during yeah, the Eid, to, uh, on, the, on the Eid day, to go out in the best of your dresses, to, if possible, but now, now that we are going to say it at home this year, and to avoid all acts of disobedience. If you now say, yes, Ramadan is over now, I can do whatever I like, as who used to say. There is this hadith that says, Man asallaha yawm al-eid, fa'ka'anna ma asallaha yawm al -eid. If you disobey, if you commit any infraction on the eighth day of Ramadan or Eid al-Adha, anyone who performs any act of disbelief on the eighth day that's, yes, Ramadan is over now, I can do whatever I like. It's a license for anything that and I'm now free. If you disobey, if you, Allah's injunction, if you commit any act of sin on the day of Eid, it's as if you have committed a sin on the day of resurrection for which there shall be no repentance or even forgiveness. And so that tells you that the incident, this pandemic of uh, uh, COVID-19 is nothing special, it's not spectacular, it's not going to be the last. And those of us who have been spared of the agony, mm -hmm. it's not because we are better or more prayerful. It's not. It's only Allah's mercies and favors that have safeguarded us and that have preserved that have preserved us. Then again, we should try as much as possible to ensure that all those lessons we have learned during Ramadan, self-discipline, helping others, caring and sharing, commitment to Allah's to ideas of Islam. The one month is supposed to be a preparatory ground for you. That one month out of the remaining 12 months. So it's to prepare you to do it. If you're a Muslim and you smoke before Ramadan, you're not smoking now, you even feel healthier. So it's meant to give you better health. You, it's got the spiritual aspect of Ramadan, the medical health side of Ramadan, and other social something, the, the rich and the poor now go together. Mm -hmm. So all these lessons, you are supposed to maintain them throughout the remaining 11 months. Because according to Hadith, if you're able to maintain all those lessons, all those uh, features, it's going to serve as a, a measure to safeguard you until another Ramadan. 
لو شنلت الكبائر جمعة جمعة رمضان تو رمضان wipes away all that happens all iniquities that you perform in between them once you avoid the deadly sins and of course we know this one and in conclusion let me recite to us this hadith of the prophet where he says from Jabir he says قَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَيُّ النَّاسِ أَحَبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ he said oh prophet who is the most beloved person to Allah what is the best act that is beloved to Allah? And the person said, The most beloved person to Allah is the one that is most useful and most beneficial to his fellow human being. See that statement. It's not saying the most prayerful. It's not saying the one that spent the most zakat. It's not saying the one that finished the Holy, of, uh, the Holy Quran once, uh, every Quran in a day. He said the most beneficial to his fellow human beings is the most beloved person to Allah. And he goes further. And he said, وَهَبُ الْعَمَالِ إِلَيْهِ سُرُورٌ يُدْخِلُوا إِلَى مُسْلِمٍ أَوْ يَكْشْفِرْ عَنُ كُرْبًا The best beloved of works or acts to Allah, the best work, the best act of worship, the most most beloved to Allah is joy or happiness that you are able to bring into the heart of your fellow Muslim or your fellow human being. Or any disaster or distress that you can remove or take away or you can relieve or your fellow Muslim brother or your fellow human being is the most beloved of works. Or or yak the anhudainan or any debt, any legitimate debt that you are able to pay against your fellow human being, legitimate debt, is beloved. Or you are able to spare him the pangs of hunger. This is he is confirming the same thing. And the prophet has said, I swear by Allah, in whose hands are the control of my soul. أحب إلي من أعتكف في مسجد هذا شهرا. For me to assist a fellow human being to solve a problem or to achieve a goal or to achieve an ambition is better and is more beloved to me than for me to perform a tikaf in this mosque of mine for a whole month. See now, so you see, you see the, the, the logic of what the prayer is trying to cheat with me Muslims. That for you to assist your fellow human beings by making him, by empowering him, or by relieving him of an agony, God said for him to do that, or for him to be instrumental in doing that, is more satisfi satisfying to him than performing etika in his own month, in his own month, for a whole month, for a whole month of Ramadan. Can you see? And he says, Waman kaffa gadabahu satara Whoever is able to suppress his anger, when he's actually able to, to, to show that anger, that you're able to suppress and cool down, Allah will certainly cover, will, will, will cover his nakedness, will uh, assist such a person. That you, something provokes you, or someone provokes you, and you have that legitimate right to show that anger, that you, then you suppress that anger. Allah will certainly also Cover you, your, 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 your own nakedness. And Allah will also fill your heart with hope and succor on the, the day of resurrection. And whoever walks on a mashama akhi fi hajatin hatta yatahayya allahu athbat allahu kadamahu yama tazil abda. Whoever walks, whoever strives, whoever assists in uh, sort of satisfying or in solving. The problem or in achieving the goal of his fellow human beings, Allah will make his, his own feet to be firm on the day of resurrection when the feet of others will be shaking towards the hellfire. That's what the prophet is telling us. And know that bad character spoils religion as vinegar spoils honey. Now, and he said the message that. This world, the way I'm doing here in Arba, four things will keep this world to be on a firm footing. 
that all these things we have said now can only be achieved if four people do the, do the right thing. One, Ilmul Ulama, the learned people of this world who work, who, uh, who Al Mustami, Al Muslim, or Aminabi, who use their knowledge for the betterment of humanity, they are one of the, they consider one of the four pillars that will keep the world safe, healthy, and prosperous. Second one, Sakhawatul Agniya. Then, the generosity of the rich people. If rich people are generous, if they give out of their wealth, Allah knows that you need more than what he gives you. So that extra that you have is meant to be spent to others. Three, Adlul Umara. Fairness and justice by rulers. It doesn't mean political rulers alone. Even you, as a member of your household, even you, as member of, uh, uh, the head of your family, and that's what Salam Salam said that if you have two wives, for example, and you are not fair to both of them, on the day of resurrection, people, like such people, will come with crooked side. They will be working. This way, so and that's the way they will be recognized. The officers that okay, that side to which we are tilted, we identify that okay, yeah, these are even this world who are not fair and just as rulers. So you have to be fair and just. So fairness and justice of rulers or leaders, number three, and number four, to our fukara, the prayer of the poor people. When poor people pray for the nation. When poor people pray, pray, pray for the world, then the society will be sound and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also uh, be able to look upon the world with his masses and favors. But again, let us sound it this warning that all this we have said that you should spend from your resources must be legitimate resources. It's not for you to uh, arm resources from or clean sometimes. Say, okay you won a lottery or you, 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 you got some ransom from kidnap or you got money from a human traffic and say yes you want to spend send people to hajj or you want to build a mosque Allah has nothing to do with such kind of resources and prayer said it that whoever spent from it's a very strong hadith as Rasulullah Sallam said and I think I will be able to get and read to you Rasulullah Sallam said that whoever has uh, spent from uh, any resources that is not clean, Allah will not accept it from him. And if you eat from it, it not, Allah will not make put barakah there. If he leaves it behind him to be inherited by his, uh, by his uh, uh, heirs, it's going to be his own provision in hellfire. All the legal resources that you say, okay, you want to you spend in Allah, so Allah will not accept at all. If you spend it, Allah will not accept it. If you leave behind for your children, for your family, it's going to be your own provision you are going to meet in the hellfire. That's what Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all those things in Allah, la yam husayi abisayi, wa la yakin yam husayi abil hasan. Allah does not wipe evil with evil. That's you have resources from evil resources and then you, you, and then you want to spend it in good places. No, it's not possible. It's only going to Wipe away your bad uh, behaviors with good charities. And that is why he said that you must do all this and give charity in when you are healthy, shahihun, shahihun. When you are healthy and you are also covetous of that resources. You have a lot of money in your bank account, you have a lot of something. And then it is that thing you spend at that point that Allah is going to accept. Not that when you are about, but like the Abba when you will see the angel of death, I say, you say, now yes, uh, give uh, one million uh, to Abba Nishemos, give uh, 100,000 to people who are in descent. Brian said, Allah will just be laughing at that. Whether you give those money or not, the money already belongs to some other people. Because the, the angel of death is already on your door, ready to take away your soul. So you are not giving that money out of your free volition. Those beautiful clothes, those beautiful shoes that you are supposed to give in charity when you are still healthy, when you still like them, when you still want to keep them.
That verse, chapter 63, verse 10. verse 10. Please, I want us to look and read and ponder over that verse. You see, that particular verse saying that spend, give out of what we have given you money, wealth, knowledge, counsel, anything. It doesn't have to be money, and as I told you, wealth counseling, prayer, knowledge, profession, competency, skill, sp give to others. When? Before death will come knocking on your door. And then you now say, oh my God, ah, why not give me some extra time? Let me leave for just a very small time, please, God. And what will you require God to do now? For a sadak. If you allow me to do that, I, I will give sadaka. <laughs> now, when somebody is going to die, we say, oh, Allah, God, give me time to pray. No. We say, God, give me time to, uh, to be, uh, have more children. No. For a sadak. So I can now engage in charity. Welcome in a salahin. Then I will not be among those who will be considered as being virtuous. That means the only thing any human being will regret at the point of death is one thing. If he was not given to, as according to the Quran chapter 63 verse 10, is that if you didn't give enough charity, and we have said that it's not only about money, clothes, shoes, jewelry, whatever, you will regret it because, you, because those things already belong to some other people at, at that point. They are no more yours. However good they are, However expensive they are, even if you have your wristwatch of $1,000, they won't say because you the one who bought it, they should bury it with you. It's not possible. So you will now be like, oh God, allow me a very small, for a sad that so I can now engage in charity, then I can be considered to be among the virtuous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to engage in such acts of worship that will make us dear and close to him. And may he also accept all our acts of worship. Amen. And may also make this Ramadan also a turning point for us Amen. in our be to be closer to him, Amen. in our be to be more righteous and religious. Uh, Allah forgives all of us and accept all our acts of uh, worship during Ramadan Amen. and beyond Ramadan Amen. and assist the Muslim Ummah and also all those who have been afflicted in one way or the other with this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant eternal rest to all our Muslim brothers and sisters who have passed on through this process or, or through this pandemic or otherwise. Uh, those of who are still living may he protect and preserve us till another Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.